Okay, I had a problem that the agar would not stay lit. Once the central heating went on, the agar went off. And here's my story about how we fixed the problem. One of the steps here is to go to your isolator and isolate the oil from the oil tank. Yeah, oil tank isolated. These are the filters that we're going to replace. And here's the boiler. Most sort of common boiler in well, where I live anyway. Um, so yeah, just sitting over here with this key. And take the key and find the hole down here. Sometimes it's locked. That's it locked. Is it unlocked? I keep it unlocked. And then pull it lift. Pull this back. And just set this over here to reveal the boiler. So as I said before, there's one filter here and one filter here. That's for the boiler. That's the T-junction there that splits it. And this one goes inside the property to a stove somewhere in there. And the stove in there is not getting enough oil because this is suction fed and that is gravity fed. And I feel that this filter being in 10 years is clogged. So next step is to drain whatever's left in the lines and I'll be right back. So after putting on some uh, protective handwear, we will slowly open this nasty filter. Still going. supposed to be clean paper filter and it's not absolutely gunked up even the top now that I'm looking at here there's no there's no model codes or model numbers or anything on that which is a bit disappointing because I try to go and get one of those little filters and don't do them anymore. So I have to change this entire thing by loosening that and loosening that and then taking these off. Here it goes. These are the replacements. So let's get going. Right, so just to recap here, there's the old filter, completely bogging, and here's the old housing, which I have taken off. From here. Using a 15 and a 17. So, when I went to the DIY store, the guy said they do not sell these anymore. Can't buy this, just this filter. Probably could get it online using the model codes, but this is 10 years old. So, I asked him, what do you do sell? And they sell these guys. There's one with the seals still on. They're four pound each, so they're pretty inexpensive. I tried taking off this adapter I'm going to call and that adapter and they ended up not fitting in here they were too too big the holes are too big for that and I don't want to run back to the hardware store and get 
the correct fittings because there's nothing wrong with this housing and sort of annoying why it doesn't work. So I tried to, I thought by taking off this, this one I removed earlier. Anyway, I, t I, th I thought taking off this bolt here would open this up and it didn't. That's like a bleed nipple. So um, it wouldn't, I was trying to loosen it and it wouldn't work. So I got my trusty friend the hammer and pretty much put this on the ground and tap, tap, tap. And then you can loosen it. And what I found inside was, not to remove what I found inside, but I found this inside, which appears to be a metal one, which probably is a lot better. So the next step was to take the old housing. Uh, notice there's a wee rubber washer at the bottom. I'm going to leave that on, slide that in, and pop that on. You can even do it that way, though. You can even put it on that way. On, close. Nice and tight. So that's the new filter, remember? There's the old filter and the new one is inside. Nice and tight. Now I'm going to go back and replace this um, into the boiler. Changing these filters turned out to be rather optimistic in point of view. It didn't work, but it didn't do any harm either by changing the filters. The problem is that when the central heating comes on, because it's suction fed, it literally sucked the oil up from the aga line and meant that no oil was getting to the aga and we're about to find out why that is but changing the filters didn't any problem just one last look at that dirty filter there so new filter in sat the pipes on top of these two blocks just to keep it nice and level um so next step is to go to the tank and turn that bad boy back on which allows the oil to flow out so go over to the boiler and hopefully the oil isn't pissing out all over the place alright no leaks yet. I should really bleed this, so I'm gonna loosen this until oil jets out. I'm just gonna get my tool. So after changing the filters, there still wasn't enough oil coming up in to fill the crucible. That oil level should come up a lot higher and hit the little hole there, and that wasn't happening. supposed to come on up more. At this point I was just checking the oil pipe feed to the crucible to make sure there was no kinks in the pipe in the line, that there was no obvious leaks in the adapters and connections and connectors or whatever you want to call them. And there still wasn't enough oil going into the crucible. That oil should be up a bit, a few more inches, or millimetres. Um, yeah, I'm just checking, is there any leaks, stuff like that. And there wasn't. There just was not enough pressure to send more oil up into that pipe, into the crucible. And the problem remained. So just a note about this section of the video. Here I've removed the wicks and the shells just to be able to visualize the level of the oil and you can see there after 20 minutes the oil has come up slightly but it should be up higher than that it should be up another maybe six seven eight mil than that and it just wasn't getting there but that shows the shells
So today's another day and we're going to look at the extra filters that can be serviced on an AGA. So at the oil control box or the oil float box um, in here, behind this um, balloon shaped metal plate is a rubber gasket and then a filter. Just drop this down a bit, you can see this rail, pressure rail, the filter sits in it. So I'm gonna change it now, or clean it out. And previous to this, I have removed this pin in the control box. And that wee slot there needs cleaned out. It wasn't too bad. But the shaft was all covered in wax and the spring was covered in wax. My wax, it's hard to imagine wax forming inside this, but yeah, it was wax, definitely was wax. So whenever you go back in, that should be nice and springy. Whenever I came there, it wasn't springy, it was solid, stiff. So... I'm gonna make another little video just about this part here, which is the control box that sits, the electrical control box or the electrical thermostat that sits on top of uh, that wee pin there. It should sit on top of that wee pin. So this bolts on just with three screws. But when I did take it off, I just couldn't help but notice that there was this like burnt piece of paper or something on it. Um, it doesn't look right. Yeah, underneath there, there was like a piece of paper. In fact, the other spur piece of it is in here, yeah. Burnt paper. Looks like burnt paper. Yeah, so... It's a bimetallic strip. So, the f capillary fire valve turned out to be the offender. And it was blocked. The oil was not flowing through it the way a new one, which is installed there, should. So yeah, if you're running a dual fuel system, a boiler and a stove in the house or the property, you may want to check if there's any issues with running them both at the same time and not getting enough oil. You gotta check the fire valves. Seriously hot. Just while I'm here, I literally when I cool, I literally pull that out, took that screw off, took that screw off, took this plate out. There's a seal, like a paper. It's actually ceramic seal. And I bought one of those online. But when I opened this out, there was a shit ton of suit all the way up here. So yeah, vacuum that out. 